Father, we magnify your name and we thank you. There is no one, no human being that can keep us alive up until this moment except you. We lift up our voices this evening to acknowledge you and to thank you. Thank you for the journey so far. Thank you. There have been no deaths. We have heard of deaths, but there have been no deaths in this church. Thank you for your divine intervention. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for the mind-blowing testimonies. Thank you for your faithfulness from the beginning of this year till now. Thank you for your love for us. We give you glory and we give you praise and we give you adoration. Hallowed be your name. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon myself, upon this atmosphere, upon everybody here present, upon the sermon to be preached, upon the altar, upon everything that pertains to us. I ask for open heavens here tonight. I ask for an unusual transformational experience. I ask for your power to be revealed, your blessings to be revealed, your propelling force to be revealed, your prosperity to be encountered. Let the fullness of the package you have for us, O oh Lord, be our experience tonight and more. We give you thanks in expectation and we give you praise for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Is somebody excited to be here today? If you are, shout a mighty hallelujah. hallelujah. One more time, shout a mighty hallelujah. Make it a third time. Shout a mighty thunder, loud, boat shaking, house shaking, destiny shaking. Hallelujah! <laughs> that hallelujah entered your village, he entered your company, he entered your dwelling place, he entered your destiny, and he's moving things in your favor. Shout the hallelujah one more time! <laughs> I hear the devil shaking because of this hallelujah you just shouted. <laughs> I want you, not just make the devil shake, send him packing. Shout another mighty hallelujah to the King of Kings. Glory, 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 glory. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, this is my day. Tell your neighbor, I'm launching the remaining half of this year in power. Tell your neighbor, check me out right now. You will recognize me when you see me again. If you believe that, shout a mighty amen. amen. Give your neighbor a high five before you take your seats. Hallelujah. Jesus, I give you praise. Thank you. Thank you. Above all other gods, we lay here yeah. and worship you. Go be lifted, go be lifted. Above all other gods, above all other gods, Lord, we lay.
Bible, you may be seated. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Thanksgiving and communion service. Hey, hey. Something is going to happen in your lives tonight. And that thing will be very good. Somebody say after me, the things, not one, the things that are going to happen to me this evening will be very, very good. Some of you are not talking. <laughs> We're in a prophetic atmosphere, so you, you collect things by speaking. You cash your check by speaking. Say the things that are going to happen to me today, they will be very, very good. And they will be sweeting me so much that the rest of my year, it will be testimonies and thanksgiving. If you believe that, shout an amen. amen. Okay. Now, you know the spiritual realm controls the physical realm. We all know that. So when you touch certain things in the spiritual realm, you start getting the results physically. Are we together? Now, faith. Listen to me. Faith is the currency that cashes things from the spiritual realm and brings them into the physical realm. But the blood of Jesus Christ is the agency that legally legitimizes you to operate in that realm. I think the grammar went far, okay? <laughs> I could feel it. As the, as the grammar was coming out, it was, it was heavy. <laughs> so, let me, let me do it with an example. Come, sir. I know I don't have much time. Let me, my Holy Spirit will help me. Let's imagine that your money, your blessings are here. Let's say they're this flower, right? Are you guys watching? Okay. So, we not, let's say this is the spiritual realm right and this is the physical realm so you're in the physical realm and all the blessings that jesus christ gave you are packaged in the spiritual realm and they are packaged in your heavenly account your faith is what draws it but do you know that for you to even operate here for you to even do anything in the spiritual realm you have to have right the spiritual realm is very organized and he has laws so anybody cannot just come and ask for certain things and expect to get it unless they have legitimacy unless they have authorization yeah, 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 yeah. please listen to me <laughs> okay for example for example Everybody in the world is asking God to bless them, even those that are not Christians, even those that are, there are different religions, there are so many, the Hindus, the this one, that, whatever. Everybody is asking God to bless them, true or false. Everybody is asking God to prosper them, true or false. But why should God legally prosper them? Have you asked yourself that question? Why should somebody cry out to God, Oh God, bless me in 2023. Oh God, bless me abundantly this June. Oh God, I need money to move my life forward this June. Why should God give you the money? Have you asked yourself that question? Why? You're not the only ones asking God to bless them. I hope you know. Even animals are depending on God to give them food. That's what the Bible said. So everybody, all creation, is seeking the same God. Some don't know the God. Some know God. Some don't even believe God, but they all want blessing. And they know that the blessing is not by their efforts alone. That there is something that comes from the spiritual realm that moves their life forward. Why is it that they should be blessed? You know why I'm asking that question? And think about it. When Adam fell, when the devil tempted Adam and Adam fell, Adam gave authority over planet Earth to the devil. So why would the devil allow a human being to be blessed? It's a simple question. That 
that Hindi man praying, that, um, I forgot to that one, they call it Krishna, something like that. Hare Krishna man, or whoever, praying, asking God, bless me. Buddha, asking God, bless me. Why should they be blessed? Ordinary human beings you see on the streets, asking God, why should they be blessed? Because the, the devil, on account of the fall of man, has custody over humanity that is not redeemed. So they are under bondage, but still asking God to bless them. Why should God bless them? Have you thought about that question before? The only group of people that can answer that question are born again Christians. Do you know why? If you ask me now, why should God bless me? If I ask you now, I'm going to help you and answer the question because I know some of you don't know. Why should God bless you? Do you know the reason why? Because everything about our blessing has been paid for with blood. Jesus paid for it with his blood. So why am I saying this? We now have right as born again Christians to legally operate in this environment because what we are asking God for has already been paid for. The Buddhists can't do that. That's the difference between Christianity and other religions. Unfortunately, sorry to say, but the Muslims can't do that. The truth of the matter is that they are looking for a God seeking to reach a god up there meanwhile the christian experience is that god has come out from heaven come to planet earth looking for you looking for you to bless you finding out that the things happening in your life that the devil has been messing up are so bad he now decided let me pay the price for you and i to get all the blessings you desire so before i even start talking about faith being the currency of the spirit as a born-again Christian, you have right to even operate in the spiritual realm before you start exercising faith. Because when you enter that spiritual realm, they're looking at you. Who is your identity? Who are you? You open your mouth and you're calling things forth. They're looking, who is this person? But when you're looking in the heavenlies <laughs> and you're calling things forth, knowing that you belong in a kingdom, Knowing that you're a citizen of the kingdom that rules over all. Knowing that you're married to the one that paid for that thing you're asking for. You have boldness. That's why when I pray, I always come what? By the blood of Jesus Christ. What does that do? It's not a tradition. It's not just what we normally say. It is what you use to show the spiritual realm that you have legal rights to collect that thing you want. Are you, are, you, are you guys following me? The blood of Jesus Christ legalizes every born-again Christian and gives every born-again Christian legitimacy to enter the spiritual realm and collect blessings. If not for the blood, you can't try it. You can't. Thank you, sir. No, you can't. Because do you know why? The blood of Jesus Christ is a ransom. The blood is a ransom. What is a ransom? A ransom is a price paid to free somebody from captivity. Okay, let me read scripture. I'm looking at time. Holy Spirit, help me. But is it entering so far? Okay. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Just to show you something, but we are, we are taking it step by step, precept upon precept. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. Very quickly, let me see if I can do it myself, primarily because of time. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. So all these people that are saying that there are many roots to God, it's not true. It's not true. That's why I say there is a difference between Christianity and other religions. Other religions are looking for God. Christianity, God came himself to look for us, to enter into our lives and make us to be like him. No other religion can boast of that. That's why the only access to God is through Jesus Christ. Okay, so it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Verse 6, Who gave himself a what? 
Say it loud. A what? Mark chapter 10 verse 45. Mark chapter 10 verse 45. After this service, oh my God, everything that, you've, that has been hanging in your life, you've been expecting, you've started receiving it fast. Yeah. Watch and see, because there's something that knowledge does. When you now know, your faith expands. And when your faith expands, receiving becomes quicker. It has never been God that is the problem. He already gave us Jesus Christ so that we can have everything. It's not him that is the problem. It's our faith to receive that has always been the delay. Now watch. For even the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. So we've established that. The blood of Jesus Christ is a what? The blood of Jesus Christ is a what? But he upgraded it. He upgraded it. He didn't leave it as being a ransom. He moved it from being a ransom and made his blood redemptive. So the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus Christ combines ransom and ownership rights. Hi. Pastor Abraham, please come. Pastor Gospel, please come. Hi. I, I know there is no time. Anyway, whatever we stop, we'll see. I want you to hold this man like this, like you are the one that held, that you kidnapped him. Yeah, you kidnapped him, he's not moving. And then you're not the one that is calling for ransom, right? That we have to pay what? Money in order to free him, right? That's how it's done. Do you know, when you want to pay for a ransom, you can just come and say, okay, how much is the ransom? He will say one million dirhams. You will give it. And they free him. You go your way, and he goes his way. That's ransom. But redemption combined two things. He didn't just pay for his freedom. He now collected him back as his own ownership. So when the Bible says that Christ has redeemed us, it means that Christ has paid the ransom, then brought us into his family as his own. That's a double package. So no, you're not just being freed. You're being owned by the king. You're being owned by the owner of the whole universe as his own. Making it such a way that tomorrow, no other kidnapper can come and touch him again. Because now he's in the king's palace. Thank you, just sit down. So, that, okay, okay, scripture. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Hi. God will help me. We'll see. What time will I stop? Okay. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. Who, del who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. In whom we have what? Redemption. How? His blood. Blood. In the spiritual realm, blood is what gives you right to speak or demand anything. Blood. In Christianity, we know about the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ is powerful and has its place. But for you to be, we know about faith, like I mentioned. But for you to even begin to make any legislation in that realm, you have to, you have to have right. They're asking, who, why, should you, why should you get a promotion? Why should you get healed? If somebody has not paid for it already, why should you? So when we say, I come by the blood of Jesus Christ, what I just did in the spiritual realm is announce to all the spirits that anything that I want and desire, I have to get it because the blood I'm coming with is the blood that paid for that thing I want. Hey, everybody, just say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Upon my life, upon my finances, what am I saying? Anything, begin to think about things. Plead it upon your family. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon your death. The power of God is already moving. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon everyone here, upon our lives and our destinies, upon our finances, upon our stay in the UAE, upon everything that pertains to us, upon Dominion City UAE as a whole. Let everything be reconciled. 
reconciled and reorganized and packaged and made perfect according to what God has designed. In the name of Jesus. But you know, if you're not a born again Christian, you can do the lip service, but spirits won't answer you. That realm, the heavenly realm where things come from, will not respond. Because they normally will ask that question. Jesus I know, Paul I know, who you? So don't be a church attender and not be a member of the kingdom that rules. Because I noticed that there are a lot of people that come to church, they are not born again Christians. You, it may surprise you, but that's the truth. So if you're here and you've not given your life to Christ, let us tidy it up now. Because where we are stepping into in this service is for us to cash our checks. You don't want your blessings to hang. You want to collect it. That's why I'm teaching first before we take the communion. You don't want your blessings to hang. You want to collect it. I, I repeat myself again. You don't want your blessings and your desires to hang. You want to what? And when do you want to collect it? If you're here, you've not given your life to Christ, stand please. Let me pray with you very quickly. Please don't be embarrassed about it. This is kingdom business and this is, this is your destiny we're talking about. If you're here and you've not given your life to Christ, please stand. <laughs> Holy Spirit, can I? God, you reign from heaven above with wisdom power. I'm giving one minute. Oh, my Lord, you're an awesome God. My Lord, you are an awesome God. You reign from heaven above with wisdom and power. Oh, my God, you're an awesome God. My Lord, my God, you are an awesome God. Come, my friend. From heaven above, we raise the power. Oh my God, you're an awesome God. Now let me explain to you. See how it is. You know, sometimes, my friend, <laughs> thank you. God bless you. See how it is. Even me, I wasn't very good from the beginning, though. I was living my life anyhow. Then I nearly died two times. And then I had sense. So I went to God and told God, this life I'm living anyhow, it's better I give it to you so that you can help me live it right than to live on my own and have accident. Twice I nearly died. And you know how it is. Sometimes you feel you're special until something strong happens then you will find out that it's easy to die. And if the person, that, at that time, if I had died, hello, <laughs> I'm telling you. So you've made the best decisions of your life. Can we put our hands together for them? Okay, see how we'll do it. First of all, you're going to tell God yourself that today you've made up your mind to live the old ways and then to serve him. So talk to God on your own. Sometimes you may kneel down. You may kneel down. You can kneel down. Kneel down on the rock. Kneel down on the rock and talk to God. This is between you and God. And what he will do is make your destiny to be right. So everybody just stretch your hands over them and let's pray. Let's pray and ask God to help. Now, talk to God yourself. Talk to God. Satan, you're bound from their lives, you're bound from their affairs, you're bound from their destiny. No more confusions. No more confusions. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I'm going to pray for you now. Give me your hands. I need a female usher somewhere.
Father, I come by the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus on these ones. Now say after me, Lord Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe you died for me and you rose from the dead for my sake. I believe your blood cleanses me. I plead your blood upon my life. Spirit, soul, and body. Cleanse me with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. I make a vow today to live my life for you. Help me be my friend. Be my strength. Be the one that blesses me. Organize my life from now and make everything perfect. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because today I receive you into my life and I am born again. The old life is gone. Everything is now new. My blessings and my prosperity are sure. Thank you, Jesus. Come into my life and take control. I give you my life with all my heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can stand. Put your hands together for your sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now, I, 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 I get this. What do you want for this week? God wants to give you a gift this week. You can whisper it to me if you want. God wants, God wants to give you a gift. This, there's no time. God wants to give you a gift this week. Huh? A blessing from God. What kind of blessing? Money? Car? House? Job? I'm going to pray one prayer and you will get it this week. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, every satanic influence that has held them back, I command all of you out. You demonic influences disturbing their lives, operating in their lives, I command you all out now with all your tokens. To the desert of volcanic dry places you go never to return in the name of Jesus Christ. Your cleansed spirit, soul, and body with the blood of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to feel them. Feel them. Feel them now, Lord, because they need you. For this next phase of their lives, they need you. Feel them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, this week, both of them are asking for jobs. I call forth good jobs for them this week. And financial favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will know that God did something special for you this very week. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Okay. Where were we? Colossians chapter 2. We read that, right? Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. I'm already out of time. Okay. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Quickly. Christ has what? Redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it's written, cost is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. Redemption is a double package. They paid your ransom and then they brought you into the king's palace as a child of God, legit. That's what the blood does. But he didn't stop there. Give me Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. He didn't stop there. After, sir, Pastor Abraham, come. After, who is the person holding who? Good. <laughs> so you hold him again. So after I paid the ransom and he was free, I didn't let him go home to go struggling so another kidnapper would pick him up. I brought him into the king's palace. But I didn't just stop there. I did two interesting things, which is what God did for every one of us. Number one, I cleansed him with my blood, cleaning him out. The blood, first of all, paid for his ransom but when he comes, you know, have you ever been to prison before? If you've been to prison and you've stayed a while in prison, when you come out, you know, they don't bait in prison. 
you'll be smelling like rotten fish. So you need to take a bath in order to be normal, to mix with people. They need to give you change of clothing so that you can be able to function in the society. So they bring you to the king's palace. And the Bible records that the blood of Jesus Christ does what cleanses us of, from all sin. So he gets cleansed. After being cleansed, they now give you a crown. They make you royalty. Somebody say, I'm a royalty. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. Just like my sisters now that just got born again, already you are a queen. That's how God sees you. Look at what he says. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings and priests. Why? So that we can what? Reign. Is your season for reigning. This remaining months of this year is re ah, me, yeah, yeah. Look, what God told me specifically was new things that was the word he said new things new things i said new things i said new things i said new things the thing will rest on you this month and then it will power the remaining year in the name of jesus christ a new opportunity new jobs new business something new will come into your life and from there you will start having from glory to glory as your testimony the remaining months of this year in the name of jesus christ we were made kings and priests so that we should what? Reign. One more scripture. You can sit down because I'm, I'm not rushing. One more scripture. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Hey, I still, it's still coming to me. I said new things. This was what the Holy Spirit told me about this season. He said new things. That was the, that was the phrase. New things. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive, it. I receive, new, I receive new things. New blessings. New, blessings. new, blessings. new opportunities. Oh. New favor. New increase, new prosperity, new streams of income in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, new connections. Connection to kings, connection to kings, connection to people in the high and the mighty places. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Some of you, it will happen this week. For some of you, it will happen this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible now says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, But you are a chosen generation. A what? Royal priesthood. A what? Holy nation. What? A peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Give me another translation. I need to run so that we can take communion because... But you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. It, no, 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 no. Give me maybe NIV, something lighter. NIV or N NLT. Something that <laughs> hits it to the point. But you're a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. If they're telling you that you're to declare God's praises, that thing is not... Is not God is not a small God, you know. God is a big God, you know. God has a lot of wealth, you know. God has a lot of ability, you know. So if you're destined to show forth his praises, you're supposed to show forth his blessings, his excellencies, his riches, his wealth, his power. That is who we are. So he got you out from the kingdom of darkness, brought you into his palace, put a crown, cleaned you out, put a crown on your head. He didn't stop there. He did another master stroke. He now said, please, I need two of you again. He now said, <laughs> he now said, you can stand there. After he brought you, I wish I had something that looked like a crown. After he brought you and crowned you, after cleaning you out, crowned you, he now took that thing that makes him God and put it inside of you, the Holy Spirit. So that the DNA that runs in you is the exact DNA that runs in God. The life that flows in you is the exact life that flows in God. So he can boldly call his child. So when you look at your daughter, comes your Oma. If I do a DNA test now, everybody will know that you're the father. What is it that they checked in the blood that makes us know that those little girls are your children? It's called DNA. That same DNA was put by God into you and I so that everybody in the spiritual realm and in all creation will know that this one is touch not. 
This one is government picking. This one is God's own possession. And when he gave us his spirit, what he was doing was not just making us his children. What he was doing was bringing us to his class so that we can function like he functions. That's why he said we are destined to what? Reign. If anything is happening to you in the UAE, it's because you don't understand and you're not talking. If anything is happening to you here, if you remember that your calling by DNA as a child of God is to reign over that situation, open your mouth and find the thing to organize. We don't beg for things because we've been given it already. That's what the blood paid for. Hey, that's why... When we come to the communion table, do you know what we are doing? We are celebrating one, what is called common union with God. That's the communion is called common union. Okay. Hey. <laughs> communion is not just a ceremony. You're announcing to everything created, both spirits and physical that you and God are one that's why the name communion is called common union with God at that point is exactly like marriage you are indistinguishable from your husband or but everything that your husband has or your wife has you also have it at that time you're indistinguishable from God everything that God has you also have it they are looking at me as if I'm just talking let me show you Bible <laughs> and I'll read these scriptures and they will take communion and go. You're all looking at me and wondering. I, I know, I can tell. <laughs> but let me now show you Bible. So that when you go home, you read the Bible and you know for yourself. Are we still here? John chapter 6, verse 56. Oh, no, no, no. Leave that one. No time. Romans chapter 17. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Quickly. I will just read two scriptures. We take the communion and we go. And if what? No, go back to 16. Go to 16. The spirit itself, did you see that? The spirit itself, Pastor did you see that? The spirit, the DNA, that's the, it's like a DNA test. So the spirit itself is bearing witness with our own spirit that we are what? Children of God. It's just like you went for DNA test and the DNA is bearing witness that this person is your child. The very essence of God is in you and I. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Next verse. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. What they are saying is that the very life of Christ is the same life you're living. Anything that Jesus has, you have it. Let me prove it though because it's flying in the air and there's no time. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 21. Just these two scriptures. Go back home and study it. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, what did he say? Therefore, everybody go with me. One, two, ready, go. Therefore, let no man glory in man. For why would the Bible say that? It's exactly because of what I've been explaining. We were removed from the power of darkness, the power of Satan, cleaned out by Jesus Christ. The ransom was paid with his blood. The Bible recorded somewhere that he didn't pay with money. He paid with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. After we were paid for and brought into the king's palace and a crown was put on our head, his spirit was given to us so that you and God are one and the same. Okay. When you, when you get that big estate hmm, and that big house, Divine, something in your mind is telling me the thing is hungry in you. So let me look at you. You will get it too, but as I was talking, his spirit was, <laughs> was collecting the estates. True or false? When you get that big estate, estates, at the time you have it, what is going to be in your mind is, okay, I've had all this wealth, I've had all these estates. It's not just for you. In your mind, you'll probably be telling yourself, okay, I want to have three kids. So let me have three powerful estates. One for kid A, one for kid B, and one for kid what C. So you're giving them what? An inheritance. So all the effort you're making is for them. 
So when the Bible says that we are joint heirs with Christ, it means that everything Jesus Christ has, we also have access to. And it's not a thing to beg about. It's a thing he has already what? Given. It's still hanging, you know, but there's no time. <laughs> Therefore, let no man... Hey, say, hapali, hekaya. A couple of people are going to get estates. I, I know what I'm saying. I don't know whether it will be your home country, whatever it is, but a couple of people. I command the release of those estates to everyone who desires it in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to step into the place where you don't need to walk. You step into the place where it's called residual wealth, passive income. You're chilling somewhere and money is coming to you. So shall it be for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. After he said this, he knew that some people will wonder. He went to the next verse. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, he started emphasizing, or life, even life or death, all things present you can see, or the one that hasn't even come, or things in the future. What did he say again? All are yours. Why is it that all things are yours? Because you and Jesus Christ got married by covenant. His blood made you one and the same. So anything that God has, as a child of God, you have an inheritance. The Bible said something. That a good man leaves an inheritance to his what? Children's. If Bible is telling you that as a good man, you should leave an inheritance to your children's children. God himself, uncle. And we are all his children. Should he not give us inheritance more abundantly than anything we can imagine? He has already given it to us in Christ. That's why he said we are joint heirs with Christ. And because Jesus Christ owns everything, we also own everything by induction. Let's stand on our feet. I, I know, I know, I know, I know it takes time for some things to settle. <laughs> but it must enter. I said it must enter. This week you must get a cage. Just for God to open your eyes to possibilities in Him. By the power in the name of Jesus and by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, I command whatsoever it is, whichever blessing that is hanging that hasn't rested, you've been expecting from God. I command it to rest in your life this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. On the day Christ was crucified, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The communion is the most sacred ritual or ordinance in Christianity. Where we partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Where we affirm and we celebrate and we announce to both the spiritual realm and the physical realm that we and God are one and the same. So everything God has, we have access to. Father, by faith, this is your body. And all these other elements of communion, as we partake of it, let your life begin to flow in our own lives. And let your blessings begin to manifest speedily this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Also on that day, Christ was crucified. He took wine and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sins. Covenant means one life, a shared life. Whatever is yours is mine. And whatever is mine is yours. That's what we have with Jesus Christ. By faith, Lord, this is your blood. Your blood that redeemed us. Your blood that blesses us. Your blood that gives us right to claim things that we desire and get obedience and a response to our favor by faith lord all these other drinks here are your blood as everyone partakes of it we partake of your healing we partake of your blessing ancestral causes are broken satanic bondages are broken and divine don't usually in the mighty name of jesus christ
the moment you take communion remember it's like marriage you and God are the same open your mouth and make demand like a wife who demands something from her husband and her husband that loves her cannot say no as you're taking this communion you're announcing to everybody the spirit realm the physical realm that you're married to Jesus Christ and because Jesus Christ loves you so much that he gave his life for you anything you ask him he will answer so you open your mouth after taking the communion and call all the blessings you want to manifest in this month of June to come to your life speedily and it will come in the name of Jesus Christ once you take the communion make sure that you're talking make sure that you're commanding your blessings to come you have right by the blood of Jesus Christ to receive that which you desire I command open doors I command a new wave of job opportunities choice job opportunities to rest on everybody in church that needs it hey. new things I, I keep hearing it in my spirit new things new things some of you are receiving new jobs already they are coming your way they are coming your way and they will rest in your life now in the name of Jesus Christ new jobs new jobs new jobs new increase I hear again new connections new connections your capacity as it is now is being opened up and expanded for you to receive bigger things in the name of Jesus Christ some of you promotions 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 it will rest in your life in this month of June in the name of Jesus Christ whatever it is you desire open your mouth and command it to come you're not begging for it you're commanding it to come just like a wife whose husband loves can make a demand of her husband you that Jesus Christ loves can make a demand of Jesus and it will come to pass whatever he has is yours call it forth in the name of Jesus Christ I hear in my spirit threefold multiplication of your income. Whatever income level, multiply by three. Whatever income level, multiply by three. I don't know who it is for, but whoever it is for that desires it, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Once you take the communion, make sure that you're praying. Make sure that you're commanding things to happen. The blood of Jesus Christ gives you right to command and be obeyed. Hey, new things, new things, new things. New things are being released. Receive it in the name of Jesus. New things, new things, new levels, new upgrade, new opportunities, new jobs, new blessings. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, new increase, new increase. New things, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This whole month of June will be a month of new things coming into your lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You will launch from that level and go to higher levels all through the rest of the year in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hey, establishment in this month of June. Establishment and settlement in this month of June. Establishment and settlement in this month of June. Establishment and settlement in this month of June. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Whoever it is for, receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, I see the hand of God lifting you. I see the hand of God lifting you. I see the hand of God lifting you. It's no longer by your strength. It's not by your strength. The hand of God is lifting you. The hand of God is lifting you. Where qualify God will qualify you where you cannot do it God will help you to do it the hand of God is lifting you higher is lifting you to the next level receive it in the name of Jesus
There is a special batch of angels. There is a special batch of angels. They have been released. These angels, their job is to make your name to be heard in the ears of the right people. The job of these angels is to announce you in the ears of the right people. They announce you in the ears of the people that will bless you. Angels, move, 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 move to every nook and cranny of this world and begin to announce us favorably. Begin to announce us in the ears of people that will favor us, of people that will bless us. In the name of Jesus. It will not be by your strength. It will be by the grace of God. It will not be by your strength. It will be by the favor of God. It will not be by your strength. It will be by the grace of God. It will not be by your strength. It will be by the favor of God. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, miracle working God. Miracle working God. He's at work right now. He's moving in your lives. He's moving in your lives. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. Expect a mind blowing testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is an angel. That angel is moving. Is moving in this environment. The job of that angel is to remove covering casts. Anything that has covered people and prevents people from being blessed. Anything that has put a covering over them. They want to get it, but they don't get it. They are almost there, but they are not there. An angel is moving from person to person. He's removing that covering cast. He's removing that covering cast so that the blessing of God will rest. Hey, kabaya, 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 kabaya. Hey, kabaya, kabaya, kabaya. Akaba, haka, akaka, ka, ebraka, kaka, akataya, apalapaya. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, kolomorioto. Every covering cast, every bondage, every lack, every delay. I arrest it right now. I remove it from our lives to the desolate for carrying dry places it goes and never returns. In the name of Jesus Christ.